Hello everybody and welcome back to our 4th Age Total War Harondor campaign where we are assaulting Arnak. This is a settlement uh, in the uh, Valley of the White Mountains, I guess. Lus Arnak would be the province, right? And uh, this is one of the last remaining strongholds, I think, of the reunited kingdom, at least in this region, in terms of their troop production capability. They have a unit of the Axemen. Let's see, they've got definitely some King's Longbowmen here, which are going to cause our rams and our... Yeah, we're, they're gonna, we're gonna lose that ram. You sort of know going in that you're going to, uh, to take some siege losses, which is why I've moved up several of these units, which is something I typically don't do. Although these, these settlement layouts with the, um, with the, the flat Dunedainic settlement, they're kind of tricky to assault in the sense that there's not a lot of weak points. You're going to be covered by towers, and if they have any units of archers, typically the AI is going to use them in a pretty, you know, decent way. Uh, and that's what they've done here. Put their longbowmen on the walls, and um, fortunately they only have the one unit, which means we're going to have a relatively free hand over on the left. But where's their axemen? This is their kingdom militia, and their captain unit, I think. Here he is, yes, Lasarnic axemen. So this is the unit that they can train out of here. And uh, yeah, they're doing their squats, getting ready for battle. So this unit will be one that we won't have to worry about, really, unless they've trained a lot of other units and sent them to other provinces. But I don't think so. We've certainly seen a few of these units already. And uh, I think if they had any in the vicinity, we would have seen more of them by now. So I think this will be a nice achievement for us. Let's see. Okay, another hit or two, and that's going to come down. The walls are going to take longer, of course. Your soldiers have broken through the gate. Now order them on and hound the enemy. Now, the nice thing about our infantry is we do have lots of swords here, which have javelins, and we can chuck them through the gates here at their king swordsman. Two units, fairly under strength. But we've got time also just to wait for these walls to come down. So let's speed up the action. Um, see if we get any volleys going in. Okay, here we go. Yep, that's going to push him back, actually. So let's do it. Let's charge in. And the nice thing about this... Oh, I really thought they couldn't march over this. Oh, uh, I'm... Wow, okay, I was very mistaken. I thought for sure that once we started doing damage to the wall, that would block off passage. But we actually have to destroy it. Okay, so we've got the gate um, that is essentially ours at this point. So we can throw our guys in. Yep, let's just, let's just do it. It'll be messy. And we'll keep getting force cammed out of uh, perspective here. But we've got lots of infantry units, and we do have archers, and we do have cav. I want to hold back with the Harondor footmen. Yep, we'll get you going. What do we have over here? Okay, we're now ready. Alright, you guys are actually queued up to charge into this. <coughs> Excuse me, yes. So, we're going to do some uh, friendly fire to our own men here. And we've officially lost the gates at this point, but we're in with the bulk of our infantry. So that's going to be nice. Let's, in fact, cancel that charge. We'll move him back here. And we'll just turn and deal with threats as they come. I want to kind of wait to bring in my cav. Uh, because that is definitely the strongest arm of my forces in general. Or maybe not the strongest, but they're the ones that I can do the most damage with. Uh, but that only works if I, uh, if I have kind of enough of them. So we're going to wait a little bit. Once these guys stop marching here... Let's have them halt. Let's put them in guard mode just for the moment. See if we can get them firing. Okay. Alright, some of them are firing up here, which is actually kind of nice. Alright, we're dealing with these swordsmen. That's fine. Okay, maybe this is the time to send Cav in here. At least the lighter guys, who I'm not, not too, uh, too invested in. And actually, let's bring you guys up, too. We're going to lose men to the towers, and I hate that. 
uh, but I don't know that there's really a way around it. I know that in the plaza here we've got a very, very small unit to deal with, so if we have anything, uh, we can we can probably deal with that. And the longbowmen are down from the walls. Alright, I've got these guys all in guard mode. I think I think that that does somewhat help with their fatigue level. Let's get the swords around here. I know we could uh, charge into the king's longbowmen. So I'm wondering now, do I want to bring up my archers? Let's do it. Let's just set them here. Get them off uh, skirmish mode so the pathfinding shouldn't be too much of an issue. And we'll just set you guys to attack the Lasarnic Axemen in the back. We want to do javelin damage to them. Okay, let's actually come back here. We didn't catch him in time. They're going back to the plaza. That's all right. If we can win this fight, we will have time to go back up there and deal with that. And we've got the archers that we can bring in. Unfortunately, we're just going to be under fire uh, with these gateways and the towers until we can spare some infantry guys to get up there. And I don't know that I want to do that with, like, this unit. These guys are all fighting. But look at the axemen. Wow. They were in the 50s uh, in terms of men, and we just got our mounted skirmishers going on them, and they're down to single digits here in a second. Alright, I'm going to actually halt you guys and get you firing at the longbowmen. Yeah, but they've, they've wrecked our swords. Let's go ahead and take them out of uh, guard mode. Well, I mean, we could have done a bunch of this to ourselves, actually. Okay, here he goes. Alright, let's cancel that. Get you guys marching. Not that they have any ammo left, but we do need to get away from the walls. There's the captain. There's the longbowmen, who are done, and we'll halt the firing there. Let them choose their targets, and let's, uh, yeah, let's get away from the walls. Basically no infantry left. Right, here we go. We could rectify that. Uh, we do have those 105 Horondor footmen waiting in the distance. I'd like to leave them mostly intact. They're a decent garrison unit uh, in the sense, not just that they're only good for garrison duty, but they are quite good in that capacity, I think, because they've got a good defense good at sort of holding a line, good against Cav, so I like to have him around. Okay, here we're fighting now. All right, yes, let's bring the Cav down. Let's bring him down this way. So try to keep them intact. We should be fine against these guys, uh, losing heavily against our archers. I think I'll just leave them uh, where they are. Some of them are pulling knives. Once we break them, we can capture the gates. Then I'll feel better about moving up the other guys. There they go. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab just the gate. I think that'll be enough. We'll bring the bodyguard and the infantry up. Let's start marching them now. And in the plaza, we're down to... Uh, okay, 21 swords and 42 kingdom militia. So we get the archers close enough to deal with that, and we should... Uh, should be good. It's just, it takes them a little while to march uh, and get into formation and then get into the gate. So, speed this up. Alright, there we go. That's all we need you for. Come back down. And uh, you guys, yeah, let's bring you around here. They haven't sent anybody out of the plaza yet, but we've got units ready in case they would uh, like to try that. Now, we are going to be shooting at them. If that causes any casualties, they're going to probably pursue us out of the plaza. This is not a great situation for us to stand and fight or to even charge necessarily because we've got these light cav and again I'd like to preserve them. So let's um, yeah, let's get our guys out. We can go our Harandor uh, spears or footmen versus their kingdom militia. It's basically the same unit. We might be okay here. Uh, 20 men to 14. They're evenly matched. And we're going to be...
causing some fear here. Not necessarily what I want, I guess. I don't want them to route. I'd like to kill them all. If they route, they're just going to get back to the plaza, but hey. And let's pull the general back. We're going to be engaged with those militia units. Yep, there they go. You hear the horn calling the charge. Let's try to get out of here. The AI, the Reunited Kingdom AI, at least in this campaign, has been pretty uh, restrained. They have not followed me too far out of the plaza, so I don't know that we're going to get an easy route and victory uh, in that way, which is too bad. This is, as you've seen, a very costly assault. Um, I certainly could have done it better. Swordsmen. Swordsmen. But what? Maybe we can go for it here. Go ahead, throw everybody in. They're eager. Uh, three, five men. Yeah, they're winning easily. I mean, these guys are not meant to be fighting well-armed spearmen, but there we go. Okay. So that cost us half of our men. All right, well, I think it was worth it. Uh, again, could have handled that a little bit better if I'd maybe taken my time. What you could do to kind of cheese things is the AI sets up before the battle and they place their longbows and all their units. And then what you can do before the battle starts is, uh, or after you click start battle, but before you actually march them against the walls is you can just send your guys to walk around to the other side of the town, uh, or at least to a side that's not covered by archers, say. And then we could have moved all of our rams around. The AI wouldn't have followed us uh, until I think the wall was being attacked, or maybe even until a, a section of the wall falls, then the AI will redeploy. Uh, but that feels, A, it takes a while, and B, feels, I don't know, just a little cheesy. So I don't mind sort of just bulldozing my way in. Uh, let's lay desolate here. We're at the stage of the campaign where we are conquering pretty fast. Um, hosting halls, that's tier three. So there's some good stuff. This is where they're training longbowmen. This is where they're training, um, see, maybe men at arms. Maybe that's only a tier four unit, but longbowmen for sure. And uh, they're Lasarnic Axemen. So in fact, maybe the Lasarnic Axemen take the place of longbows um, in Arnak or the, take the place of men at arms. Uh, we'll keep the military policy, but, oh yeah, we can actually keep the library. Um, did we bother with that in Harngand to train ballistas? No, we did not. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's sort of a late game thing, or maybe not late game, but it's something that you can engage with if you want, but for me, it's, it's something I tend not to worry about until... Uh, later in a campaign, and usually with a faction like Harad. Harandor's got the short campaign conditions, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't take too long before you actually reach victory. In the last episode, we had defended against an assault of Dol Amroth, and uh, the public order's looking fairly low, but I think you'll be fine. We're training some stuff. Should be, should be okay. At this point, really all we've got to worry about is a couple of breaches in our defenses. We've got a couple of very small armies just flitting around uh, Thorondor of Ethring, and then we've got Lieutenant uh, Henion here, both with some, you know, some mix of units, but mostly we're dealing with militia at this point. Just a few rebels, essentially, who have not yet seen the writing on the wall. Let's bring the spy back to the east and see if we can detect any other armies. Yep, here's one. And this is a good mix of swords and militia. We've got another one up there, another army. And there could be more between here because Kalembel and Mornan, uh, you know, can be pretty decent at training stuff. They're probably up to tier two. I don't know if these start off as financial settlements or what, uh, but they may have higher uh, recruitment potential than what we're seeing so far. I kind of doubt it though. I think they're tier two at the best. Uh, if we're going to see higher tier units, it's probably going to be coming from over here because this may be a military settlement and they may have some other settlements here that are pretty well advanced. That They're just not yet sending them uh, west towards us. The other issue is that we had a, uh, a unit that was besieging this fort here uh, and he apparently, did he call off the siege? But we, either way, he's now passed 
uh, the fort. So I guess we don't have to worry about that. In that sense, we've still got the um, the area denial, I guess. They can kind of worm their way by it if, it if they bother to take a few turns, but not a huge deal. <clears throat> so we could maybe... Okay, yes, we're training stuff in Eminarnan, so I think we'll be fine, really. We could we could crush that unit if it makes trouble. And of course, we're training our outriders in Harn Gond. And Harman, you know, just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and train up a couple units of swords. And I think, what are we at here? Two seasons for the Lord's Barracks, so we're going to be training those retainer spearmen in no time. Um, let's see, 15,000... And what to spend it on? Well, we're building our uh, Dominion building in Minas Honor, so that's going to be important. Everything else I want to be on hold because I don't dare upset the public order here. If I destroy the Homeland Dominion in Pelargir, for example, which I do need to do eventually, that's going to potentially throw the public order here down below 70, and I'm going to get a rebellion. So we've got to be very careful. Uh, that also means taking Arnak was... Um, uh, was kind of a risk in the sense of public order. I think Dol Amroth was maybe not in the red face uh, when this uh, this turn began, because I hadn't taken Arnak yet. Um, actually, no, taking the settlement shouldn't do anything as long as I keep that uh, the settlement uh, dominion intact. So that's the thing we have to watch out for. But anyway, now what do we have left here? The flinders of our, uh, of our assault force here. It's always a little better than you think. So what we can do is this. With all of that cash, we can send some units back to Minas Anor that we can retrain in a single turn. Let's go ahead and get these guys. Uh, and while we're at it, we'll just replace those units there. Um, otherwise, we can't train anything here. But fortunately, we can at least retrain those Gondorian mercenaries. Everything else here, I think I'll keep as is with the idea that maybe... Maybe we'll find some use for these tiny uh, fragments of other units. But we've got a very strong army over here at Ethering, and so I think we'll be okay, uh, even if we do get attacked. Okay, so I think we're good there. And just want to check the east again. All right, we're training another scout. I know that taking this guy out of Karenbad is going to decrease his subterfuge by a point, or two points, actually. But that's all right. I think we'll be okay. We've got a governor here. Or actually, do we? Yes, we do. So I've, I'm feeling pretty confident. Get the spy out of here, and we'll get a new one. And uh, he will be able to get a network established in a few turns, too. But so far, no alarming signs out of Anorlith. Um, everything here looks status quo. Let's see what the next turn brings. Okay, we've got a siege over at Adele. That's probably Khand besieging uh, Rune there. And as soon as I move a spy out, wouldn't you know it, Harad sends their own in. Okay, so far it looks like just a subterfuge war. But what do we have here? Okay, so Rune is able to stave off the siege of Adele. They've got some, you know, tier 3 stuff. This is Spearman of Rune. That's coming from another province. The Mustering Fields is just going to give them their their Axemen. Uh, but yeah, the Axemen of Rune. Uh, you know, these are good units. Good enough. It's, it, you can beat them for sure, but they are uh, they are pretty capable. Okay, what do we have here? Yeah, man, Khand. Khand is doing very well. I'm very pleased to see that. The thing about this faction is uh, they tend to be a little weak on the auto-resolve because they favor archers. But this army looks like it's going to do fairly fairly well. It's it's mostly a tier 2 army, it looks like. All of these uh, Variad units uh, that are, at least these units, are available at just the first two tiers. Uh, this is a higher tier unit, I think tier 3. I could be wrong about that, but this is good. They've got a family member leading it with the uh, Dragon Guard, so... I'm, I'm thinking they might take Amron Dor. Let's see, eight turns left now. Ooh, this is their ruler, though. So I'll keep the spy here just to see how that war unfolds. And what else do we have here? Yeah, oh, my gosh. Wow, we've got Khand. We've got Ravanian uh, besieging Erebost. So <laughs> that's going to be an interesting... 
political situation in the East in a couple of decades. Okay, this must be Karen Bad. Yep, we took our spy out. They thought it was a good time to move a spy in, and uh, it was not, so we killed their spy in action. Great news. But so it looks like Cond is going to uh, be able to push back here. Usually, um, it, it sort of surprises me to see them up here, but I've got to remember that this province does border this one, I think. So they do see that as a valid target. Uh, okay, and they're still, they, they don't have another army here yet, but it might not be going well for Rune. And Ravanian is, is doing decent, decent at this stage. Well, they've lost some territory to uh, Rohan in the north there. Uh, okay, so yeah, the United Kingdom is worming armies in. And this could be a bit of trouble, but there's no way that they're going to beat me in an actual siege battle, right? If, if I play the assault out, you remember what Minus Honor looks like on the battlefield, right? It's, uh, it's just, I, I, there's just no way. I could just hold up at that uh, plaza and they would be about guaranteed not to make it up there before the timer expires. So this looks like the same army that we saw earlier. Yep, the six units. And this is, okay, swords. Everything else is just kind of stationary. Well, all right. So we'll just wait. <laughs> um, I can take guys out of Ethering, but I think the public order might be a problem. Although, let's do it, just to see. Yeah, actually, it's fine. Totally fine. We can even replace a uh, swords unit here. Um, let's let's swap him out though. Well, no, eighty. I think we'll keep the sword unit in just because having sixty men in Ethering. Oh yeah, that's right. This doesn't have walls either. Okay. Well, let's move the spy up. I want to see what this army is. Yep, I thought so. Knights of Dol Amroth. Let's take care of them, shall we? Let's go ahead. We'll do a little battle here. Engage the enemy. And uh, actually, that was a horrible mistake because now they're going to attack Ethring. Hmm. But we don't need all these guys to fight Thorondor of Ethring. We need several units of Cav to get the charge bonus, like these guys, against the Knights of Dol Amroth. We don't need a lot of the infantry, honestly. We need like a couple units. So let's take you. Uh, actually, no, the infantry can't get back to Ethering in time. So we don't need all these bodyguards. Let's take you guys who are not commanders. This is our heir, actually. All right, so let's take you other guys back to Ethering. And, okay, they can't get there this turn, but this army can, and they could probably, yeah, they, they could bring in some other units. So what do I need to have here? Um, yeah, let's do that. Oh, we can't even make it. Oh, what, what a jet. Very frustrating. All right. Let's take uh, you guys out. How's Arnak going to look? Not too bad. Okay, I'm going to go down here just to see. Uh, yeah, Thorondor of Ethering really can't go around me. Um, there's no way for him, I don't think, to get above the, the source of this river, which is the Ringlow again. Uh, and he can't go over the pass here, so he's basically trapped. This army, though, could be a bit of trouble, so let's bring Fuenir the Great Conqueror down uh, here. And we'll give him those orders, and hopefully we'll be in the area to uh, kind of take care of stuff as need be. We do want to grab this province, or the fort there. And let's go with... Um, let's see. I don't think we have anybody in Harn Gond. Is it worth building anything here? Probably not. I, I know I'm being extremely stingy, but I like to get my discounts. So I want to have an attuned governor doing the building. Let's go with um, Karen Bad is probably due for some building. A road camp is going to be cheap, quick, and gets us a couple hundred. There is a bit of land tax associated with it, but it's going to help trade. So let's do that. And I think we'll just end the season. United Kingdom may attack us at Ethering, and we'll see if we can hold off. 
Okay, another siege. Uh, no, they did not decide to push the ethering issue. Okay, yeah, they've got us um, got us blockaded at Dol Amroth, but we've also got a far bad Paloran hanging around. Okay. All right, and there's our Lord's Barracks at Umbar City. So what we're going to do now is queue up a unit I've been waiting for, which is these Retainer Spearmen. So let's go with, let's queue up four. We'll retrain that unit as well. And uh, we're going to get some of these cranked out and then send them north. Uh, because by the time the campaign ends, I'd like to put an army together that has some of these elite units in it. It's just kind of fun that way. All right, a couple of uh, ideas or a couple of uh, news items. All right, and he's coming of Agent Umbra. That's actually nice. I think I'll leave him here and he can escort this army. He's going to give them some movement points, hopefully. Uh, he is... Let's. Oh, he's accommodating. That's going to... Oh, no, that's that's actually not too bad. Um, sometimes you get these traits where they're they're nice to their men, and uh, it hurts movement points because he's he doesn't want to push him too far. So he's a little lazy. All right, lazy, though, that is going to hurt movement points. Uh, okay. Well... I think it's still better than not having a governor at all. I think governors, uh, or family members rather, do have some hidden traits that make your guys move farther. Okay, so Master Silversmith, oh, wonderful. 20% trade income, and he's an adept uh, commander and an inspired governor, wonderful. Another one of those rare but valuable ancillaries. And profits are looking quite low at this point, but that's because we just queued up a bunch of units and we'll see if this materializes harad is gathering armies together looks like they're aiming them at far harad's uh last remaining stronghold i think and the united kingdom here again is maybe thinking they want to besiege Ooh, with a couple of men at arms see we are going to have some interesting uh some interesting armies eventually here uh facing us so all right what to do now I think we could deal with this, and then move this army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't retreat now. And uh, just to review, we've got 30 Knights of Dual Amroth, 21 of the Bodyguard, Knights of the White Tree, and just a couple of units of Militia. We're going to have an okay time. Uh, but Faran of Central Harondor has reached the age where his beard turns white. I think that translates into age 50, in the vanilla game anyway. So he gets the uh, the older guy portrait. That means we may not have him for much longer. We'll have to see. Uh, and he's the heir, so that may throw the succession to a different house, which might have ramifications for just the effectiveness of my governors and commanders. It's not so much that there's a, like like a civil war type mechanic or penalty uh, in the mod, because that is that is really tricky to balance and frustrating if it's not balanced like perfectly. And even if it is, some people just, just don't like to play that game uh, of having to retake provinces that were yours. But there is a problem of efficiency. So if your guys are disloyal, what I really mean by that when I say disloyal is they've got a low opinion of liege trait. And that's not going to make them rebel, but it is going to make them less effective at their jobs. So they're going to have worse morale, let's say. They're going to have a harder time governing. They're going to make less money. Their troops are not going to fight as efficiently. Uh, they're going to have worse, maybe, line of sight. Th things like that. Just in general, they're not going to be uh, effective commanders or governors. So this has got to be the last... Uh, Dole Amroth themed unit that is available to the Reunited Kingdom. I guess it's possible to get something in Western Gondor that they're just keeping in the fort. Uh, it's in that pass of the White Mountains to the west. But I think it doubtful. They've been going back and forth uh, with war against Dunland. That's probably going to continue for a while. And so, you know, unless something major changes, I don't, I don't see a lot of big armies coming out of the west towards me. It's going to be armies that are made up of, you know, first couple tiers units. So nothing too intimidating. 
but this will be interesting to see Knights of Dual Amroth. Uh, they're they're, they're going to be pretty effective, and I don't have any spears to counter them. But we're going to let our archers do some of the work here. So the strategy is, well, we're going to see what happens, but these guys, the chargers, Lancer Cav, are going to uh, hopefully uh, deal with the Knights of Dual Amroth. We're going to maybe pin them. Uh, if that fails uh, to materialize, we're going to see if we can get them uh, hit with our javelin guys, and they're presenting themselves. All right, so let's go ahead and just throw in. And let's go after their general. We'll get these guys backed up, get them doing a nice charge. Uh, I'm going to send the horsemen around to harass the light horse. These Harondor armsmen are, um, yeah, they're not doing too well. Knights of Dual Amroth are, of course, a very good unit. Oh, and they're backing off. Okay, well, let's see if we can kill the general fast. We've taken out five of them, uh, but that's probably been largely due to our javelins. There goes the general. Let's see what this does. Well, they're a very strong unit uh, and very good morale. And as you can see by the, um, the crown on the banner there, they are giving a morale bonus to the men in their army. And that includes the men in their own unit. Let's get our guys behind, actually. Throwing the air in. This might be his last battle. Uh, he may die relatively soon here, so. All right, there they go. halt. The sorting skirmishers, I'm curious how many kills they got. They probably did the lion's share of the work. Well, actually, the charging probably did a, did a fair amount as well. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can catch as many of those guys as possible. We really don't want any of them uh, getting away. Now, I know that it looks like we've, uh, okay, we've killed 65%, so we will have to do more of this. And we used up all of our ammo on the archers, but let's... let's take out all of these units if we can. Okay, we're actually going to catch all of them. Alright, nice. And uh, we'll bring everybody back this way. Corner the Kingdom Militia, uh, but they're going to get javelined by swearing skirmishers. And they are not in... Uh, they're, they're not feeling too good about, about these strange foreigners who are in the rear... Throw everybody in. Wavering. I think they're going to fall as soon as they're hit. There we go. Good. Looks like we lost a couple of men on that. But very nice. We did lose uh, quite a few men. Let's take a look at the stats there. The Swerding Skirmishers uh, killed 16 men. Now that was probably entirely or mostly the Knights of Dole Amroth. Uh, and that's about, that's a little more than half of the unit, right? 16, they had 30 to start. So they did a lot of damage to them, I suspect. Uh, and now we don't have to worry about them anymore. And a battle standard, okay. That's right, it's been a while since we've seen that. Uh, okay, well, now we can go back. And let's do that. Let's set up right on the crossing. That's technically our territory. Oh, we could we could hit Kalembel. Move out. Yeah, we could. Bring all of you guys and you and you. Move out. Okay, it didn't work. Alright, we'll try it again on another uh, another turn. But we could try for uh, for Kalembel through that attacking the army that's standing outside. It would be good to get this because Ethering, interestingly, does not start with walls. I think Kalembel does. And of course, if you're playing as a reunited kingdom, that doesn't matter um, so much and, unless things go drastically wrong. But if you're conquering territory, having this unwalled settlement uh, is, is, of course, risky as a frontier. So capturing Kalembel would make that feel uh, much safer. The other thing we can do, though, is finally move down towards this fort if we're okay with leaving Minas Honor the way it is. And, you know, now I'm not so sure. I'm thinking we may want to... 
Okay, we, we've at least saved Pelargir and Arnak, right? Uh, because they don't have Ethering anymore, at least currently. And so that means they're not inclined to move into West Lebanon, right? They're not inclined to move towards Lin here. In fact, this army may, may be kind of paralyzed. So you know what? I'm, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to hit this force. And let's do one more battle here. We'll get rid of the armies that are, you know, behind uh, our lines. They're sort of in our territory. That'll free us up to capture that fort relatively soon. That's an easy capture. It's not going to hurt our public order or anything. It'll bring us another settlement towards victory. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think that's fine. All right, where are you? Oh, they're right around this interesting looking rock formation. And it's no ranged units, uh, swords and militia. So let's group them up. And I mean, I guess like that. Doesn't matter all that much, arguably, but let's bring our guys around. And speed it up. They may they may come out towards us. I'm honestly not sure what they're going to do. This sometimes the AI um, struggles with interesting battlefield structures or formations like terrain stuff. But here they're doing pretty well. They've got it uh, defending their rear and flank. So that's pretty decent. Change up our our approach slightly here. Let's get our archers right there. We'll maybe bait them down towards us. And as we win this, um, we're going to have this army still close enough to reach Minas Anor or even Emin Arnin within a turn or two. So if that fort across the Anduin falls, then we should be able to uh, to deal with the problem. All right, what are you guys doing? You can't retreat any further because you already retreated somewhere. But thankfully, we are shooting at them. Yeah, all of our archers can hit him here, so great. I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. Or even at the point where our mounted skirmishers can uh, get in range. This is really not good for them. Oh, they're all bunched up. All right, let's just sit here and let the missiles do their thing for a little while. All right, and I think I will change uh, the formation here. Get a bit better shot, maybe, with some of our archers. But we've done a lot of damage already. Cut a lot of their units down to half, it looks like. And I'm just going to run out the arrows, and then we're going to send in the swordsmen, throw javelins. Being extremely cautious, because as you can see, our armies have been weakened quite a bit. Oh yeah. Okay, we don't even need to really wait for them. Uh, or we, we can just wait for them, rather. Alright. Time to move up, I think. King swordsmen here are probably the biggest threat, but that's what our uh, general is for, our cavalry. Alright, let's uh... There we go. And yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Just a nice little last stand in the hills here for them. But 
but that should be it. And they may have been, like I said, just kind of paralyzed because at the moment that they that, that they lost Ethring, uh, that army was no longer in touch, right, so to speak, with the rest of its territories. And I think the AI really responds to that, the, um, the contiguous nature of the provinces, just like it would in Medieval 1. But that frees, uh, frees us up a little bit in Lin here, at least, you know, theoretically. And, gosh, so we're two turns away from Minus Honor. If we move down here, we might put ourselves at three turns away. But I kind of want to do it. Let's see. Let's move this scout down. All right, I'm not seeing anything in the trees. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Militia and swords. Let's do it. He's a conqueror, not a defender. We'll move him up here. Uh, give ourselves a couple of turns to... Well, we'll do... Let's see. Yeah, a bunch of ladders and a siege tower. And we'll make that the goal for, uh, for the next episode. So in this one, we took Arnak. Uh, we've taken out a couple of squads, I guess you could say, of forces that have just been hanging around and causing us just some logistical irritations. Uh, and now we'll be able to remove this problem in our rear. We are sitting at 25 provinces. This will be number 26. This has to be one of them, so that'll be 27. We could do 28, 29, and 30 if we wanted. That's the question. I'm thinking that you know, it might be fun to go for something more interesting like Minus Ithil and Carandros rather than to go up to Mornan. And I feel like Kalembil is also a reasonable border, whereas if we go all the way up to here, now it's like we would have to defend these from an incursion this way, uh, and we'd also have to defend Dol Amroth. So I think Kalembil makes makes a good limit for us uh, in terms of our north northwestern border. So I think that'll be the goal for the next episode. Uh, grab Romifalis Keep. Hope that uh, that um, the forts here manage to hold off the United Kingdom for a little while, uh, while they seem to be gathering forces, and uh, that'll allow us to finish our training. We've got some very nice elite units, finally. They're going to come online uh, another turn or two, and we're going to have several of these retainer spearmen. We'll bring them up north, and we'll, uh, we'll send them against whatever looks like the most fun final target of the United Kingdom. So I hope you'll join me for that. Until the next one, everybody, take care.